The Cardinals gave Kyler Murray a massive five-year contract extension worth $230.5 million. It makes him one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL and locks him up through 2028. $160 million of those dollars are guaranteed for injury and $105 million is guaranteed from signing. It equals out to about $46.1 million per season, which is only second in the league behind Aaron Rodgers, who is making $50.3 million a year. It also has the second most guaranteed money behind only Deshaun Watson's $230 million fully guaranteed deal from the Browns. I mean, I still don't know why the hell Cleveland agreed to that, but you know, the Browns are the Browns. There was a very interesting clause included in Kyler Murray's contract labeled Independent Study Addendum. The addition to the contract said that Kyler had to study film for four hours a week. The Cardinals were going to give him film to watch to prepare for the team's next game, and he had to get credit each week for watching that film. That didn't include the time that he's in meetings at the Cardinals facility, and if he didn't study the film in good faith, it apparently wouldn't count. So, he wasn't allowed to count watching the film if he was doing something else that distracts him, like playing video games or watching TV. There's certainly a history with Kyler Murray in gaming. He has a dual monitor setup and live streams on Twitch. Kyler listens to music and relaxes while playing games. He said it's a good way for him to calm down after football. I mean, Kyler even joined FaZe Clan. Clearly, Kyler has a passion for gaming, but that can be a concern when you couple it with the things that he's said in the past. Last year, he admitted that he doesn't really spend a lot of time watching film. Kyler said he's been blessed with the cognitive skills to see things before they happen, and that he's not the kind of guy that's going to sit there and kill himself watching film. Now, teams usually put clauses in contracts, like making players go to certain workouts or reaching certain work goals, but forcing a player to study outside of team meetings is certainly an odd one. It made Kyler Murray look really bad for not studying studying enough, and it makes the Cardinals look bad because they just gave a guy a ton of money who they clearly don't trust to sit down and watch film. If Arizona felt the need to put the clause in his contract, then it's clearly a big deal. Kyler Murray signed a huge contract, and he could have literally lost all of his guarantees if he didn't sit down and study film every week, something he should probably already be doing. It just looks terrible, and all it did was create a huge distraction. When asked, asked about it, Kyler said that it was disrespectful to think that he didn't put the work in. Ultimately, the Cardinals decided to get rid of it from the contract, but why the hell was it needed in the first place? Let's be real, the Cardinals put way too much into Kyler Murray to not pay him. Remember back in 2018, the Cardinals had a first year head coach, Steve Wilkes, and a rookie quarterback, Josh Rosen. After one season, that was really bad might I add, the Cardinals got rid of both to draft Kyler Murray and hire Cliff Kingsbury. Arizona selected Kyler first overall at the 2019 NFL Draft, and he had a really promising rookie year. He ended up winning Offensive Rookie of the Year after he threw for 3,722 yards and 20 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, along with 544 yards and 4 touchdowns on the ground. The Cardinals, however, were still bad and went 5-10-1. Kyler continued to improve in 2020, nearly 4,000 yards and 26 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, plus over 800 yards and 11 touchdowns rushing. He ended up making his first Pro Bowl, but Arizona, again, wasn't really that great just going 8-8. Eight eight. Last season was kind of the tale of two halves for Kyler and the Cardinals. Arizona started off 7-0 and looked really good. Kyler was even in the MVP conversations, but then he went down with an ankle injury and missed three weeks, and the Cardinals just fell apart. Kyler ended up throwing for 3,787 yards and 24 touchdowns to 10 interceptions and had over 400 yards and 5 touchdowns on the ground. He went 9-5 in the games that he started, but the real story was in the postseason, his playoff debut, where Kyler really struggled. The Cardinals got absolutely mauled by the Rams, and Kyler threw for just 137 yards, didn't throw a touchdown, and had two picks during the game. 
I think the most exciting thing to watch this season when it comes to Kyler Murray is going to be his connection with Hollywood Brown. In the one year Kyler did start in college, his top wide receiver was Hollywood Brown. And what was his junior year? Hollywood had 1,790 yards and 10 touchdowns. He was named a first team All-American for his efforts. The Ravens drafted him in the first round in 2019, and as a rookie, Hollywood had 584 yards and 7 touchdowns. He did improve the following year with 769 yards and 8 touchdowns. Then in 2021, Hollywood had over 1,000 yards for the first time in his career and added 6 touchdowns. Following Brown's career year, at the 2022 NFL Draft, the Ravens shipped him and a third rounder off to the Cardinals for a first. But the reality is that he hasn't been nearly as good as he should have been. Hollywood hasn't quite proven that he can be a number one wide receiver, and it looks even worse when you consider the guys drafted after him too. Debo Samuel, AJ Brown, DK Metcalf, Terry McLaurin, and even Hunter Renfro. Maybe Hollywood will be even better with a quarterback back that he's already familiar with from college, and it's undeniable that Kyler is the better passer between him and Lamar Jackson. Arizona certainly overpaid for Hollywood, but it's obvious that they were really desperate for a wide receiver. DeAndre Hopkins is coming off of the worst year of his career, a lot in part to a hamstring injury and then a torn MCL. Then in May, it was announced that he was going to be suspended for the first six games in 2022 for taking performance-enhancing drugs. So, no Hopkins to start the season, and the Cardinals' number one statistical wide receiver in 2021 was Christian Kirk, who left in the offseason to sign with the Jaguars because, you know, they were stupid enough to give him $72 million. Without Christian Kirk and no DeAndre Hopkins to start the season, Arizona is going to have to rely on some veterans, which is the nice way of saying guys that are way past their prime and getting old, like AJ Green. Green spent a full decade in Cincinnati after the Bengals drafted him fourth in 2011. He was a menace on the football field through his first seven seasons in the league, over 8,200 yards and 57 touchdowns over the span. Green slowed down in 2018 with a toe injury and then then missed all of 2019 because of torn ligaments in his ankle. 2020 was his last year in Cincinnati, and he had just 523 yards and two touchdowns. Green then inked a one-year, $8.5 million deal with the Cardinals last offseason and was actually pretty damn good, 848 yards and three touchdowns. He then re-signed with Arizona on another one-year deal. Another member of the retirement home club is at tight end, Zach Ertz. Ertz was drafted by the Eagles in the second round back in 2013, and after a solid rookie year, he had over 700 yards and then had over 800 yards for the next five straight seasons, including 1,163 yards in 2018, the same year that he had a tight end NFL record, 116 receptions. During his tenure in Philadelphia, he made the Pro Bowl three times and of course, won a Super Bowl. In 2021, he was traded mid-season to the Cardinals for Tay Gowan in a fifth rounder. In total, Ertz had 763 yards on the year, 574 of those came in Arizona. In March, Ertz signed a three-year, $31.65 million extension. Luckily, Ertz can help block, because the Cardinals' offensive line isn't exactly going to be stellar in 2022. Arizona, nicely put, has an old offensive line. It's veteran-heavy for sure. The average age of the starters come week one will be over 30 years old. Justin Pugh, Rodney Hudson, and Kelvin Beecham would have made one hell of a unit about five years ago, but now it's just a bunch of guys on the downswing of their careers with injury concerns. DJ Humphreys is probably the best player on the line at left tackle as he enters the last season of a three-year, $45 million contract. It's going to make life specifically hard for James Conner, who just signed a three-year extension in Arizona this offseason. After four years in Pittsburgh, he signed with the Cardinals in 2021 and ended up scoring 18 touchdowns, 15 of those on the ground, and adding over 1,000 yards from scrimmage. The Cardinals are entering a bit of a tough crossroads this season. 
It's been three years since Arizona fired a head coach and got rid of a young quarterback after only one season to bring in Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray. They only have one winning season together and got blown out badly in their single playoff game. Not to mention that life isn't going to be particularly easy playing in the NFC West. The Rams literally just won the Super Bowl and might be even better this year. The 49ers have a very good roster and Trey Lance could even end up surprising a lot of people. The Seahawks are also there. The Cardinals are going to have to prove that this is a team that can contend. There are a lot of questions and little success to actually show for it. Arizona has made some bold moves in the past, and they're going to get criticized for good reason. And the fact that the Cardinals felt like they had to force its franchise quarterback to watch film is just the cherry on top. 